Good evening, everyone. You don't have to shut up. <laughs> but if you want to hear me, it'd be good. All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 City of Salem Volunteer Recognition Event. This event is the most exciting thing, one of the most exciting things that the City Council gets to do each year, and we all very much look forward to this evening, and I hope you're looking forward to it as much as we are. We're here tonight to celebrate the spirit, generosity, creativity, and oftentimes the heartache that goes into the extraordinary acts of volunteerism in our city. Some of the people we will celebrate tonight have spent decades being a volunteer. Some have spent thousands of hours and other thousands of dollars. Some, some of them ensure a brighter and more beautiful tomorrow, while others encounter broken hearts and broken dreams while they help mend the fabric of broken lives. What connects them all is their undying passion and unending, unending commitment to our community. Winston Churchill said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And it was in that spirit that I found myself thinking about the lives and stories of the nominations that we received this year. I find it simply remarkable that so many people in our community are doing, doing so much, and most of it without credit. You are the beating hearts of our community and the inspiration to us all. Your acts of kindness and philanthropy are the threads and needle of harmony, and your journey to true north illuminates the path for others to find. I think I can speak for the entire city council when I say that we are constantly humbled by the amount of work our volunteers do throughout the city. And while we are unable to acknowledge every volunteer we have, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Now, on with the show. To begin, I'd like to ask Councilor Gwynn to come up and present our first award. Good, good evening. It's my honor to be here tonight and to hand out the first award. I'd like to ask Russ Monk and Tom Odstead from High Impact Technologies to come to the stage. Uh, Tom is on his way to Australia. Oh, well, yeah. good There's for Tom. <laughs> <laughs> the Al Laux Business Government Par Partnership Award honors a business making a major contribution to a city program or project. Russ and Tom built 30 micro shelters that the city bought for our un unsheltered residents. They demonstrate an unwavering conviction to creativity addressing emergency preparedness and care for the homeless in our local community. They listen carefully to the goals and objectives of city staff and nonprofit partners to learn of the needs and issues. They develop products that could be considered for use in emergency response, daily city work, and in sheltering people experiencing homelessness. They also spend time engaging with community members, elected officials, and other local organizations to encourage them to contribute to the solution of ending homelessness. Please join me in thanking them for their vision and for their commitment to the greater good. Next, I'd like to ask Andrew Zimmerman to, to please come to the stage. The Outstanding City Advisory Group Volunteer Award recognizes an individual serving on a board, commission, committee, or other Council Advisory Group. Andy has served on the Historic Lands Commission since 2018. During this time, he has developed the, the HLC's social media and community out, outreach program. A lifelong Salem resident, he wrote a column about Salem area history for the Statesman Journal from 2013 to 2018. He served on the Oregon Century Farm and Ranch Program Board from 2015 to 2020, with his last year as chair. 
Andy has served as the HLC chair since January of 2023 and enjoys sharing his love of local history with the community. Please join me in thanking Andy for his important contribution. Counselor, Counselor Varney will present the next award. Sorry. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Uh, it's good to see everyone. In uh, the year 2000, Coretta Scott King said, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. We are a great city, and that is because of the work and volunteerism that so many of you do in our community. Thank you. So tonight, it is my pleasure to ask Dr. Tommy Van Cleve and the volunteers of the Office of Civic Engagement at Willamette University to please come on stage. The Dorothy Patch Community and Educational Achievement Award recognizes students, teachers, or schools that have successfully undertaken a project to benefit the city or community of Salem. Willamette University's new Office of Civic Engagement was created to increase the impact of student volunteerism by more collectively addressing community-identified need. Dr. Tommy Van Cleve is the inaugural assistant dean for civic engagement and is helping equip professors, students, and staff to live out the institution's motto of not unto ourselves alone are we born. For a number of years, Willamette students have been volunteering with the Center 50 Plus Friendship Brigade. With COVID pre preventing many of the interactions between students and the site they were assigned, under the guidance of Dr. Van Cleve, students pivoted and even expanded their reach efforts to care for seniors in Salem. First, at Windsor Rehabilitation Center, students spent their own funds to replace the community garden space with wheelchair accessible garden beds and to move the main gardens next to the sidewalk so that residents could access the gardens whether, they, whether or not they used mobility devices. Students returned and planted the gardens based on resident preferences with the intention of any produce that was harvested being donated to the Marion Polk Food Share. Over the summer, Assistant Dean Dr. Tommy Van Cleve maintained the garden space and with the help of student volunteers harvested the produce for the food share. This is just one example of the work that Dr. Van Cleve and his students do. Your contribution to this city is simply wonderful, and we thank you very much for it. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask David Craig to come up on the stage, please. Okay, Hi there. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Great. <laughs> the Salem Spirit Award recognizes individuals or groups that are constantly promoting Salem and are frequently behind efforts to improve the city. Professor David Craig is a fervent advocate of Salem's urban forestry program. For the last several years, he has worked closely with the City of Salem Parks Operations and Urban Forestry Division, collaborating on street and park tree inventory, heritage tree nominations, tree and wildlife habitat studies, and helping build an invaluable partnership between the City of Salem and Willamette University. 
He has encouraged well-qualified Willamette University students to apply as urban forestry interns to great success. Thus far, four of his students over the last three years have interned with the city to assist in tree inventory data collection. One of his former students is now working for us. David organizes group tree planting events with university students and staff and with neighborhood volunteers. His boundless enthusiasm brings great energy to volunteer events. Just this year, he worked with city staff to organize two tree planting events. The first was with Willamette University students along University Street adjacent to Salem Health. And the second was a neighborhood volunteer planting along Leslie and Liberty Street Southeast. He is a strong advocate for the urban forest and we appreciate all his time and effort to improve the quality of life for all of Salem's residents. Thank you very much. And Councillor Hoy will present the next award. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you all for being here tonight. For our next award, we'd like to honor Chain Griggs. Please come to the stage. Come oh, over. I love this lady. Anyway, the At Your Service Award recognizes an individual group or project nominated by a City of Salem department or division. Oh. Chain. The current president of the Salem Planning Commission is soon ending her second term. Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah. Chain's time on the Planning Commission included the adoption of the Housing Needs Analysis, Economic Opportunity Analysis, the NEN Cessna Neighborhood Plan, the Nesca Lansing Neighborhood Plan, the State Street Refinement Plan, Middle Housing Code Provisions, and Our Salem, a once in a generation update to our comprehensive plan. In addition to her time on the Planning Commission, she has served on the Salem Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, the Historic Landmarks Commission, the Salem Budget Committee, and the Salem Public Art Commission. Man. <laughs> I'm really old. Oh, oh <laughs> man, okay, I won't say that. Um, Chain's dedication to the community through her volunteer work at the city and her work with Salem Rotary, Salem Art Association, and the State Capital Foundation, and and the Deepwood Museum and Gardens Board should be commended. Please join me in a big round of applause for Shane Griggs. Please come to announce the next award winner. All right. Is, I am so lucky to be able to be the mayor of the city, I have to tell you, I'm so excited. And, and so it's such a proud alum of Willamette University. You guys make me so proud, uh, all of the work that you've done. Thank you so much. For the first of our Mayor's Youth Awards, I'd like to ask members of the Salem Public Library Teen Advisory Board to please come up on the stage. Right here, right here, right here. She wanted to make an entrance. Welcome. All right. The Mayor's Youth Achievement Award is presented to a youth or youth group involved in a volunteer project benefiting the city. 
The Salem Public Library Teen Advisory Board is a group of 21 middle and high school students who meet year round and plan projects that will benefit our entire community. They have been responsible for the Take What You Need program, which connects vulnerable residents with vital personal care items like toothbrushes, socks, pads, and tampons, hats, sunscreen, and more. They are also responsible for the annual Halloween house, where they choose a theme and each build a room for a medium, medium scary haunted house. <laughs> medium scary. That is good. To, I'm, that's very specific. <laughs> a medium scary haunted house that school age children and families are able to enjoy. These are just a few of the examples of the benefit that the students provide to our community and I couldn't be happier than to award them with this Youth Achievement Award. Next, I'd like to ask Evan Baker to come to the stage. <laughs> right here is fine, yeah. Evan assists with the Marion County Special Olympics as an assistant coach for winter basketball is an annual bell ringer in downtown Salem for the Salvation Army, and volunteers for community events such as the City of Salem's movie night in the parks, in movie nights in the park. This, well, this year, while attending Willamette University as a sophomore, Evan will also lead the teen program for the United States Civil Air Patrol program's Salem Composite Squadron. Also of note, Evan was a cadet of the year for the region, including Alaska, Hawaii, California, Oregon, Washington, and Idaho, and just received the Billy Mitchell Award from the National Headquarters Civil Air Patrol Auxiliary of the United States Air Force. Only 15% of Civil Air Patrol cadets ever reach this. He is now the commander for his squadron in Oregon. That's amazing. Wow. Simply put, wow, this young man has been active in the community since middle school, and we're so lucky to have him. Thank you, and congratulations to Evan Baker. <laughs> and Councillor Nordyke is going to present the next award. Good evening, Salem. How are you this evening? Oh, I think we can do better than that. How are you? Yes. That is much better. So for the Mayor's Youth Achievement Award, our final Youth Achievement Award, I would love to welcome up students from my alma mater, South Salem High School. Now, if you look up the National Honor Society for South Salem High, you'll read that their program is dedicated to incorporating character, scholarship, leadership, and service as a foundation to motivate students towards creating stronger, more inclusive, and more supportive relationships within their school and community. The students you see before me have demonstrated all aspects of what it means to be in the National Honor Society and have left a mark on our community for years to come. In November 2022, Alexis Reeves contacted Salem Parks with a desire to serve along her peers. Through weeks of constant communication, the perfect service opportunity presented itself 
and these students brave the cold, wet, glorious January weather of Oregon to plant trees at Riverfront Park. Have you seen them? They look amazing. Yes, yeah, applaud the tree planting, yeah. These students expressed how happy they are knowing that they did something good for their community and are looking forward to revisiting these trees in the coming years. Thank you for your dedication and stewardship to our community. Right. For our next award, I'd like to ask Lindsay Bigelow to come to the stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special award in my heart, the Lisa Letney Award. The Lisa Letney Award honors a person who volunteers to serve Salem's unsheltered and others at risk of becoming unsheltered. This is our newest award category. I was honored to bring the motion to city council to establish this award and honored to present its first recipient this evening. This award is named after Lisa Letney, a fearless advocate for the unsheltered who left us far too soon. And we are so fortunate to have the Letney family here with us tonight. Please join me in a round of applause for the Letney family. <laughs> Now then, on to Lindsay. Uh, several years ago, Lindsay Bigelow helped launch the Kindness Closet of Salem. And since that time, Lindsay's dedication has been outstanding. People who know her know you can contact her at any time when there is a houseless person in need, and she will meet you with sleeping bags, goodie boxes, and whatever other necessities she has. Lindsay spends her weekends cooking homemade meals and taking them to serve at Arches Day Center. If you've not volunteered at Arches Day Center, you should. I have done it and it is inspiring to work directly with the Community Action Agency and all the other volunteers who are here to show kindness and dignity to everybody. Now, her garage is often overflowing with donations that she is hoping to give away, but beyond the time she spends, Lindsay knows names and faces. She takes the time to see the human being and to get to know them. She knows the stories of people experiencing houselessness in our community, and she does everything in her power to relieve some of the suffering. So please join me in acknowledging our first ever recipient of the Lisa Letney Award, Lisa, Lindsay Bigelow. All right, thank you all very much. I'm happy I was able to get through that one, honestly. All right, now please join me in welcoming Councillor Virginia Stapleton for the next award. Thank you so much and good evening. It is my privilege tonight to ask the members of the Highland Neighborhood Association to please come to the stage. The Outstanding Neighbor Award honors a neighbor or neighborhood group that has set an example or performed a project to benefit a specific neighborhood or area. The Highland Neighborhood Association has hosted several events, worked to promote the association, and recruited new membership. The members that serve on the board have provided leadership to the association and are now active on multiple social media accounts that have helped grow the board. The board has coordinated several community cleanup projects, reignited their own nation, national night out party, increased participation in their community garden, and hosted a summer yard sale. 
Highland board members even created a new association logo that best represents their neighborhood. Please join me in celebrating their work. All right, please um, join me in welcoming Councillor Phillips to the stage. Okay, again, my name is Councillor Phillips and I'm honored to present, uh, present the next award. Good evening. The next Outstanding Neighbor Award, I'd like to ask Jenny Hyatt to please come up to the stage. As a newer member of the Morningside Neighborhood Association, Jenny Hyatt has done an outstanding job of working to promote awareness of and per participation in the Neighborhood Association. She manages their Facebook and Instagram pages and has created a fantastic association newsletter which is sent out to any Morningside neighbor who wants it. Additionally, she monitors neighborhood engagement via online channels, resulting in a tremendous increase in engagement over the past year. Not only does Jenny genuinely strive to make the neighborhood better through her active communication, but she does all of this while working, parenting, and while enrolled in an intensive full-time graduate program for psychology. We are so grateful for Jenny's cheerful commitment to the enrichment of the entire Morningside Neighborhood Association. Uh, join me in applauding uh, Jenny Hyatt. And please join me in welcoming Councillor Jose Gonzalez, who will pre present the next award. Good evening. Tonight is my pleasure to invite the Center 50 Plus respite volunteers to the stage. The At Your Service Award recognizes an individual, group, or project nominated by a City of Salem department or division. We are all better when we each contribute to caring for our seniors. Each of these volunteers extends a warm and friendly welcome to each person who walks through the doors of their respite program. They work together providing one-on-one -on -one attention to the participants as needed assisting with meals, celebrating special moments, and being there to provide a warm smile. When one of the participants walks in and says, my friends are here, you know you're part of something special. We are very conscious of all that volunteers do also for the Among Friends and Time with Friends program. We know that without the support of our dedicated volunteers, we will not be able to meet the goals of our program. Without their commitment to the individuals living with dementia and their care partners. So join me in uh, thanking them for their work. Now it's time for the first Mayor's Merit Award. This award is presented to a recipient for special projects or activities undertaken for the good of the community. I'd like to ask Leslie Garcia to please come to the stage. <laughs> the 
Leslie was nominated because of her work organizing mothers in the Northgate Neighborhood Family Council to become more engaged with their city. Her support and inspiring messages created real results that I saw firsthand. And her efforts representing the neighborhoods and family councils initiative have paid off for those mothers and the city. Today we celebrate the extremely successful Fun Fridays at Northgate Park and the permanent bathrooms that will be installed there soon. <laughs> Thanks to Leslie's efforts to empower neighbors to be part of a building of a difference in their community to see a better tomorrow. Please join me in thanking Leslie for a warm heart and determination. Mayor Ho, we present the next award. <clears throat> All right. For the next Mayor's Merit Award, I'd like to ask the folks from Emory & Sons Construction to come to the stage. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Which one is Emory and who's the, who are the sons? No. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> On Wednesday, August 23rd, construction workers from Emory and Sons, I don't know why, but when I read this one in my office, I got really emotional and I'm finding myself being really emotional reading it now. So you're just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize. I'm, I'm just feeling very, very uh, moved by this. Uh, they were working on a nearby construction site. They witnessed a fire burning in the brush near Liberty Road in Jory Hill. And when the wildfire broke out, and without thinking about themselves, they rushed in with their heavy equipment and began cutting a line, a fire line, through the brush to help stop the fire. Shortly thereafter, the, the first Salem fire crews arrived and began attacking the fire and protecting properties that were immediately threatened. Emory and Sons employees continued to assist with the fire line construction at the direction of the fire crews. Salem's fire chief went on record saying, they were instrumental in assisting our crews with their containment and eventual extinguishment of a large, rapidly moving wildland fire burning in grass, brush, and heavy timber. There were many resources that came to assist with the extinguishment of the fire. However, the early fire line construction by Emory and Sons played a significant role in limiting the fire spread. It's not often that ordinary citizens are called upon for heroic actions, but these residents didn't flinch when it came time to putting themselves in danger. Please join me in a round of applause and a deserving thank you to Emory and Sons Construction. <laughs> Now I'd like to invite members of Black Joy Oregon to the stage. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Good to see you. Our community is strongest when we share the vision of a compassionate and inclusive city. Oh my gosh, I just noticed your boots. Those are... Those, those are amazing. Wow. Those are really amazing boots. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Black Troy, Oregon is committed to the same goals and has contributed countless hours uplifting the black community in Salem and across Oregon, including financial support for individuals, community gardens, education, con cultural events, and social justice awareness campaigns. Black Joy Oregon lifts up women, uplifts women into positions of leadership and empowers communities of color. They demonstrate and organize within our state to demand change for our most marginalized community members. They provide opportunities for BIPOC youth and community members to do their community service with them, as well as providing diversity, equity, and inclusion trainings. Please join me in thanking Black Joy Oregon for their efforts in bringing our community closer to harmony. Now I'd like to ask Pam Garland to come to the stage. You're no hurry. Take your time. Yeah. Somebody's excited. If you heard about the glass birds that were hidden in parks around town, and, and you weren't sure who were, was responsible for it, well, let me introduce you to Pam Garland. <laughs> she came up with the idea of hiding something in local parks to incentivize our residents to explore the city. I love this idea. She met with Art and Gail Abendorf of Glass Art Oregon here in Salem, and they decided on glass birds. She then met with each of the four Salem Community Progress teams who individually funded the purchase of the birds in one of their parks, and they have hidden one, about one a month at a time, one in a month at a time in, in a park in East, South, West, and North Salem. She also coordinated with the City of Salem Parks Operations, of course. The project is called Salem Seekers and has been a wonderful addition to the other great things being done here in Salem. Pam is an example of how a, a single individual with an idea can have an extraordinary influence on the lives of others. Thank you, Pam, and, and congratulations on this award. My assistant writes these scripts sometimes, and he's sitting in the, out there watching me having to read these words now. This is an award he's very excited about he, because he loves cats. And so I would love to, <laughs> he's back there cheering right now. Uh, can Melinda Rosso and Rhonda Murray please make their way to the stage? Hello. There may be no greater gift in this world than the gift of life. As every devoted pet parent knows, our pets are part of our family, and for some reason, once they see the need in our community for animal welfare, they feel compelled to stop that suffering. It's estimated that Melinda and Rhonda rescue 300 stray, injured, or abandoned cats every year, and have been doing cat rescue for over a decade here in Salem. Melinda and Rhonda have dedicated much of their lives to this work, as well as their personal money. These cats are then spayed or neutered and given general care before either being re-released or found new homes. Animal welfare is an important part of any thriving community, and I greatly value their passion for this work. Oregonians are well known for being animal lovers, and these women exemplify that image. It's impossible to overstate the amount of pain that these women have relieved and how many of our four-legged friends they have saved. Please join me in thanking them for their love of animals and for their contribution to our city. Now it's, I'd like to ask Rod Berg, Quandre Robertson, Robert Doe, and Fabiola Camacho to please come to the stage. Hey. 
Hanneker Crumley is also part of this award, but was not able to make it tonight. Do we have other folks? Is that everybody? Okay. All right. Uh, these individuals represent four of the founding members of the Salem Police Department Advisory Council to the Chief that was established in 2021. These members represent a cross-section of the community with diversity of thought, perspective, and lived experience. The Advisory Council provides the Chief of Police with a community voice to help inform decisions related to police policy, practice, and training. The ACC currently comprises 16 members. However, these original members have contributed greatly to the betterment of the community by giving their time and sharing their perspective as part of the Salem Police Department's efforts to strengthen community trust of the police. They have been actively engaged in procedural justice training and listening sessions with the Chief of Police and have been an integral part of the team's overall trust building plan with the community. Moreover, they have all contributed greatly to the department's efforts to examine the human dimension of police policies which directly impact community. They have been integral to, the provide, to providing a community lens on the review process. I am very grateful for their willingness to give their time and passion for this, to this community to help the Salem Police Department do the necessary work to shift the paradigm of policing toward a new, deeper connection with residents with an emphasis on relationships, collaboration, and trust building. Please join me in thanking them for their work. Next, I'd like to invite up Kurt Seifert and any of the other members of the team from The Hub. This, this nonprofit provides affordable new and used bikes, lights, locks, and other accessories, all weather clothing and used bike parts, and even offers bicycle repair classes to unhoused and low income individuals. They have partnered with, the, with other organizations and developed a special relationship with community donors and state resources to capture a stream of bicycles that would otherwise go to waste. Last year, they gave out 48,839 in income based discounts, recycled or reused recycled or reused over 44,000 pounds of steel and aluminum and distributed 743 bicycle commuter, commuter patch packages, which includes a, bi a bicycle, lock, light set, and helmet. They take what's broken and fix it, and then they give it away or sell it for very cheap. That's amazing, and they're amazing. Please join me in a round of applause for the hub. <laughs> And now, Councillor Phillips will present the next award. For the next award, I would like to uh, invite, uh, ask Ross Sutherland to please come to the stage. So the, uh, the Willard Marshall Award is presented to a person who has contributed the most to the city during a given year. Since 1996, Ross has worked in Salem, first for the Oregon State Archives, then as Executive Director for Deepwood, then as Executive Director for Marion County Historical Society, and now as the Director of the Bush House Museum and Curator for several exhibits for the Salem Art Association. His volunteer efforts have been just as meaningful. He has been instrumental in leading Salem's Culture and Heritage Forum since 2013, and he has also served on the Board of Directors for Travel Salem and the Lord and Shriver Conservancy. 
He has also worked to educate traditionally underserved community members about our community's heritage, art, and culture through the Chemeketa SOAR program, the Demunas Center, and the Oregon State Hospital, including, share, including sharing Salem's wealth of heritage, art, and culture opportunities with Marion County. And most recently, over the last year, Ross used his archival expertise and contributed hundreds of volunteer hours to inventorying countless uncatalogued historic documents. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. Uh, maps and objects here at our library and civic center to ensure that most uh, that the most valuable of these will be preserved for the public to access and learn from for many years to come. Salem is very lucky to have you within our community and we thank you so much for all of your work. And next up, I would like to uh, welcome Councillor Stapleton to present the next award. Thank you so much. I think this is our last, last award of the night, so enjoy. The Vern Miller Award is presented in recognition of an individual's outstanding long-term service to the city. To receive this prestigious award, I would like to ask Bill Metzler to please come to the stage. I hope I got your last name correct. Meltzer. Meltzler. Did I do it right? Okay. Okay. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in. All right, everybody. Bill is being recognized tonight for his long-term time service at Bush Park, and in particular, the Rose Garden. Bill has volunteered in the park for 23 years, starting initially with the Tuesday Gardeners Group, but with his expertise in and love of roses, he soon took over that part of the park. Bill turned 83 this year. Congratulations. 84. 84. 85, in February. 85 in February, everybody. <laughs> just If we just keep staying here, it might continue. <laughs> and over all of these years, he has been, on average, putting in six hours of work every week at the park year-round. Bill has been responsible for forming a group of volunteers, no easy task, uh, to help him in the garden. Bill has trained them in all aspects of good rose care. The pruning, the deadheading, identifying stems attacked by a new pest, the rose stem girdle bug, and cutting out the doomed stems. Bill knows more than anyone about the collection of antique and rare roses in the Miss Sally Bush collection. He has worked hard and categorized categorizing all of the bushes, identifying them with a special numbered tag, and replacing damaged and missing tags. Bill also takes cuttings from many of these roses, nurtures them at home, and replants the healthy plants in the garden. In off seasons, Bill turn, turns his attention to weeding so that the roses can flourish and their new growth is not choked out by the weeds. His co-volunteers are consistently amazed and impressed by his knowledge of roses and his stamina and commitment. Please join me in thanking Bill for 23 years of service. I had the mayor come up because um, the mayor is, uh, has just a crush on this man because if you don't know this about Chris, he loves his roses and um, so I know this was really important to him. So with that, Mayor Hoy. Thank you. I really want Bill to come over to my house and take care of my roses. <laughs> Somebody needs to because I have, I've been neglecting them. 
Well, this has been a really great evening, and I'm so glad that you were all able to join us. We've reached the end of the event. Thank you for coming, and thank you for all that you do for the city of Salem. I hope that you'll join us again next year. Thank you all. Thank you.